Hi everyone, I'm Kieran Thompson, Interrail Manager for Young Rail Professionals Scottish Region. And I'm Isabel Lawson, Rail Week Manager for the Young Rail Professionals National Committee. Welcome to Young Rail Professionals Collaboration with Colas Rail for National Apprenticeship Week. We'll be speaking to Gemma Simmons, Head of Career and Development, and Rich Flanagan, Program Delivery Manager from Colas Rail, to answer the big question, what is an apprenticeship? They'll be telling us a little about what an apprenticeship involves, why you should consider applying, and what an apprenticeship Colas Rail has to offer. National Apprenticeship Week is an annual event which this year, in 2021, is running from the 8th to the 14th of February. National Apprenticeship Week aims to celebrate the importance of apprenticeships and gives employers like Colas Rail the opportunity to showcase their apprenticeship schemes to the next generation of railway professionals. It's something that's especially important to me because I started my career by taking on a four-year apprenticeship which allowed me to become an electrician and it's supported me every day since, especially my current role as an electrical design engineer where the majority of the work is in the rail industry. Young Rail Professionals is a not-for-profit organisation run by Young Volunteers in Rail, which exists to promote, inspire and develop the next generation of railway talent. YRP has several thousand young members working across all areas of the UK rail industry, from ops to HR, lawyers to signalling engineers. InterRail is a student and young persons engagement initiative within YRP. We exist to address the skills gap within the UK rail industry by providing resources, events, online content and links to professionals and organisations across all areas of the rail industry. Interrail has a dedicated team of volunteers that work hard to deliver all content under the Interrail programme. Interrail delivers content to railway organisations, YRPs, YRP members, universities, high schools and primary schools and collaborates with a range of organisations and teams within YRP, other railway organisations, education boards and more. For more information on Young Rail Professionals, you can find us on social media and at our website www.youngrailpro.com To get started, Colas Rail is a leading provider of railway infrastructure services, providing design, engineering, project management, construction and maintenance solutions for light rail, metro, mainline and high speed markets. I'll now pass you over to Gemma to provide a bit more information on what Colas Rail offer as part of their apprenticeship scheme. We are committed to developing early careers to support the skills gap in the industry and for the last 11 years our graduates and apprentice schemes have set us apart in the industry from our competitors. So we've got a combination of current and new talent coming to our business ready to deliver the new contracts we win year on year. For the early careers the opportunities are huge. You can fast track to engineering and management roles at all levels supported by our experts and leaders, many of whom came from our graduate programmes themselves. It's not just management speak, so many of our previous intakes are leading our sites and leading the teams that deliver on the sites. They're real jobs where you're given great experience early on and real responsibility from the start. There are so many examples I could give you of this, but we're really proud our first graduate is now the operations director in our Rail Systems Alliance. At Colas Rail, we deliver the end-to-end -end process for clients such as Network Rail and the West Midlands Combined Authority. This means we can do all aspects of rail construction. We can design it, we can build it with our multidisciplinary project teams, we can maintain it using our on-track plants and deliver materials to site with our locos. We can renew track as well as work on urban and light rail projects in town centres and cities. So we've got so many opportunities and they cover light rail, signalling, overhead line, P-way, design, survey, traction and rolling stock, commercial and project management, and they all have fast track development plans that managers and you work towards to make sure you get to move up to your next level. This is a really fast paced industry with career progression at all levels. And we need you to join us to support and deliver and innovate to provide the best solutions to our clients. So what apprentice programmes do we have at Colas Rail? We've got programmes across all disciplines and they tie to the Rail Engineering Trailblazer at level three and level four. So that could be in signalling, overhead line, P-way, traction and rolling stock, freight train driving, as well as design, survey and light rail apprentices. We've been running these programmes for a number of years already and have people developing into engineering techs, um, site managers and upwards. These people are so important to our success and they're loving the opportunity it brings as well. 
You get to earn while you learn, combining a qualification while working on site and being paid for it. All of our schemes link to a professional body as well, like the IMECI or the Permanent Way Institute, meaning that you get a qualification that's recognised across the whole industry. You will work nights, weekends, shifts, there'll be travel and have responsibility from the start. So it's not for the faint hearted, but the rewards are really high and you'll have a continuous career after finishing your scheme where you can continue to develop up the career ladder in your discipline. Who knows, you might even be managing the new intake further down the line. The salaries we pay our apprentices are way above the national and industry average, as we believe in investing in our early careers talent from the start. And there are annual pay increases as long as you're doing well and working hard on the scheme. We have apprentices working on our South Wales Systems Alliance, being critical to the delivery of the multidisciplinary jobs we have there. We have apprentices on our signalling framework. We have them maintaining our plant and freight, as well as training to drive these machines as well, or working on our Midland Metro Alliance on the light rail scheme. All of our divisions have experts and mentors to support you during your scheme. And within six months, you will be on site delivering core work for us and making a real difference. So what do you need to have to join our scheme? Ideally, you need maths and English GCSEs with grades A to C. You don't need to have done science or engineering subjects, but you need to be ready to complete our gamification assessment at the interview stage. It's fun, it's easy to do, and it demonstrates your natural ability and behaviours for us to assess so we can see if you fit with our engineering requirements. Importantly, you need to be motivated and driven to succeed and hungry to take on the opportunities available to you. So come to the interviews, tell us about the interesting things you've done to date. Overall, we have recruited 45 grads and apprentices this year, and it grows year on year. I really hope you apply for our scheme and join the great talent we have in our business. Hi, my name is Cameron Williams. I'm a level three apprentice signal and installer for Colas Rail and I started in September 2018. I first heard about the apprenticeship on the Colas Rail Careers website. My favourite part about the apprenticeship scheme is the fact that I'm getting paid to learn. Uh, when I finish my scheme, I will be getting a level three qualification, which is equivalent to an A-level. It's also a great way to get your foot in the door, uh, to set up your career for a lifetime, really. Since my time on the apprenticeship with Colas, I've learned so much about railway signaling. Uh, I've learned about loads of different kinds of signaling equipment, how they work, how to install them and how to test them. Uh, I've also learned how to integrate well into a team uh, and how teamwork can affect the job. I've been supported every step of my way through my apprenticeship, uh, whether it be from managers, signaling installers, team leaders. Uh, yeah, there's been plenty of people who've helped me with anything I need, any assistance at all. My advice to anyone who was thinking of looking into an apprenticeship would be to definitely give it a go because like I said earlier, you get paid to learn uh, and you get a qualification and you also set yourself up for a career for life. There's plenty of places you can go with the apprenticeship. I'm Ellie, I am an apprentice engineer and I began my level 3 rail engineering PUA apprenticeship just over two months ago now. Um, so I was looking online for apprenticeships because I was uh, really interested in being able to gain the qualification and earn money, that was really important for me. Um, and I came across the Colas Rail apprenticeships online and um, applied. So getting to grips with all the rail terminology, um, I've worked with the development team which has really helped me see what happens right from the start of a job being handed over to Colas Rail, um, some of the equipment that's been used on site, um, oh, there's, just, there's a lot 
already that I've learned. I feel like I've come quite far already. I think everyone has been supported so far in my apprenticeship uh, in the office, on site, in college. There is always someone around for you to ask questions and no question is a silly question. They have uh, helped me understand things that I've just been absolutely clueless about. My tutor at college is always on hand so if I'm unsure of something I can always give him an email um, and he'll explain to me any information that I need. And again in the office, everyone is there, they want you to learn, it will help them if you're able to do the job so they're really enthusiastic for you to learn so I think I've been really well supported so far. I would say um, bite the bullet and do it. I thought I was going to be too old to do an apprenticeship um, and I was quite nervous about that but actually everyone is lovely there's a, a range of ages so why not just go for it. design engineer. Um, I joined Colas Rail in November 2017, so about three, just over three years ago, and I joined through the Level 3 OLE apprenticeship. My older cousin works in the railway, and he was telling me that it was something that I should look into, so I think I just went onto the government, government website about apprenticeships, and then, then I was searching through them, I found the rail so I just applied for sure because I thought you know, I might enjoy it. In this apprenticeship we've learned multiple different aspects of the world. We've learned about some parts of PUA, not too much since we're OLE focused. But we've learned all different parts of OLE, different types of equipment. And me, myself, I've gone into design. So that's another, another part of OLE that I was able to dive into and that's what I'm focused on along with still doing my OLEC 2 works as well. Yeah everyone was quite welcoming like all the OLEC 3s, the co supervisors, construction managers, they're always there for you. If you need any help or any assistance you can just you can just drop them an email or before COVID times, you could just go up to their desk and ask them for anything and they'll just be there for you. My line manager's always on my case, checking my work. Yeah, everyone's just been very helpful to make sure you, you keep your knowledge fresh. I would highly recommend to people to join an apprenticeship because you're gaining new skills, you're gaining new knowledge and building a career while you're earning money. So it's a win-win for you in both cases. And especially with the, the current situation in the world right now, the railway has virtually been unaffected by this COVID-19 thing. So you don't, you are quite, we are quite stable in our work. So I would definitely recommend, if you can, to apply for an apprenticeship on the railway. The final part of the National Apprenticeship Week webinar collaboration with YRP and Colas Rail is a short question and answer session where we can ask Gemma and Rich some of the key questions that are often asked with respect to apprenticeships versus other routes which may be available. So Gemma, if you wouldn't mind, uh, and J uh, sorry, and Rich as well, the uh, Colas offer continuing professional development uh, both to apprentices and upon the completion of an apprenticeship. Yeah, absolutely. So typically apprentices are recruited into a specific pathway. So for example, signalling um, and a specific role as well. So they'll develop within that. And there's technical pathways within engineering for them to continue to progress after the level three. They could go on to a level four um, in rail engineering, for example, or go on to do an HNC or an HND if they want to go down the more academic route. But it is also possible to get involved in the more management side after your level three and get more involved in being a site manager or a site supervisor. So there's all sorts of options. I know we, we've touched on this already in the videos that we've seen um, previously, but is there anything that, that you try and push ex uh, apprentices to experience every day? Like what sort of things can they expect um, from a day-to-day -day sort of apprenticeship? 
it's important that they work alongside the more experienced members of the team. I said uh, that allows them to uh, pick up those newfound skills and uh, experiences, which then um, allow them to work in both an office-based environment and an on-site-based environment. Um, so they, they get involved in the detailed planning and the um, theoretical side of, of what we do before then being uh, able to get out on site and actually apply those skills and, uh, and uh, help deliver those rail projects. Um, I think the other thing as well as an apprentice, what they would expect day to day is, a, as Rich said, a real juggling of experience out on site and in the depot, but also they'll be going to um, the training centres as well to learn the knowledge piece alongside it as well. So it's quite a lot to juggle, learning all the skills, then kind of trying to apply them on site, understanding all the safety um, you know, regulations, making sure that they can apply all the skills that they're learning in a practical environment in a safe way. And that's what Rich and the, the team do really well, is making sure that we kind of juggle all of that. So there's a lot to do. They've got paperwork, they've got you know work tasks. So no day is probably the same in that sense, but it yeah, there's lots of lots of things to get involved in and lots of different challenges within the scheme. I think you probably see a lot of people coming out of their shell as well, don't you? Like the social aspect of things when you first see them kinda they're all drowning in their, their uniforms and things like that and then you see them kinda filling out and uh... Yeah, I'm sure and I think Rich, I'm sure, will expand on this further, but in terms of the, the way the teams operate, it's a highly pressured environment out on site. So they're getting involved in all sorts of different aspects of the job and working really closely with teams. So it's it's a it's a close-knit environment, I think, and they really get that kind of team morale and support and development and being part of a team that's successful as well. So I'll hand over to you, Rich, obviously being site-based. Yeah, I think, I think um, it's really important that, um, that, as you said, we have close-knit um, teams. We certainly have a one-team approach. Um, and that, that environment is there to uh, facilitate all types of, of personality personas. Some people obviously are more um, loud and brash than others. But what we really encourage and what the team do is really support all of those different characteristics in, in all of the team members that we have, because we need all of those um, skills and personalities to obviously um, manage and step up to the challenges that we, we face in what is a, a really demanding industry. Um, so yeah, we've seen also in the videos of the existing co-last apprentices, apprentices that they um, they can specialise in specific areas as well. Um, like throughout the apprenticeship, have they rotated around various teams or tasks or do they have the opportunity to do that? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think um, the apprentices need to work alongside the more experienced colleagues within the teams, uh, which allows them uh, their development to learn and then apply those newfound skills in, in an operational environment. As part of that, there'll be a mixture of office and site-based work, which uh, will allow them to undertake detailed project planning and preparation before ultimately going out on site and delivering those um, and constructing those rail system projects. Yeah. See, so just on what you had mentioned about like the, the sort of technical side of things when you are applying, how does the, how does it work now that the, there's there's kind of no exams and things like that? Is that how is that filtered out? Is that is that more heavy or more weight bearing on basically the interview and things like that as opposed to what the apprentice or the potential apprentice has already done so far in school? So yeah, so to be honest, that hasn't kind of filtered through yet anyway. But even so, when it does. Um, because we're looking at a relatively junior academic level, what we're really looking for through those assessments is what their natural ability is. Because if we only recruited based on people that had achieved certain things already, we would only be picking from a very small um, group of people, whether it's graduates or apprentices, and they would typically not be female, not from BAME backgrounds. You know, it'd be, it'd be lots of, of white males that we'd be recruiting into the industry again. So. While there's nothing wrong with recruiting white males into the industry, we're also looking to diversify where we are um, as an industry because, you know, we've got female um, apprentices coming through now into some of the engineering 
disciplines and if we focus just on what had been achieved I don't know if those candidates would have got through the process which is why we use gamification it's really critical for us. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning as well that at the time of uh, life that these apprentices are playing it's, it's a lot about a potential what potential yeah. is there with, with, with these candidates and, and, and how we can then support that to nurture them into the future um, management and leadership uh, within, the, within the company. Are there, any, are there any specific qualifications or experiences that would help somebody get into an apprenticeship or is it is it mostly based on the kind of the interview and the interview process so right through as you said like your, your testing and things like that? Uh, so in terms of the application process typically we'd prefer somebody to have math and English at levels A to C for our apprenticeship programmes because I think it's it, it's a foundation that is very helpful when they join the programme. However, you can study for your functional skills at the same time, so it's not a deal breaker, but it is, it's a lot to take on if you're trying to learn the technical side, the knowledge, do, do all your paperwork and do the equivalent of your GCSEs at the same time and to prove that you've got that level, so it's just a bit more challenging. But I think in terms of people that might not have thought about entering the rail industry or engineering is a lot of the apprenticeship programmes um, are really practical. So it's thinking about, do you prefer to learn by doing as opposed to sitting and reading something and being all, you know, much more academic? Do you prefer to be you know, out doing something, building something, tinkering around with um, you know, equipment, things like that? Like someone that interviewed for us recently was saying, you know, when they were growing up, their parents were always getting really cross with them for always trying to dismantle old TVs and things like that. You know, it's those kind of things, those little quirks that when people interview, you know, it, it kind of lends itself to the fact that this is an industry that might work for them. Hmm. However, as I said, we've got um, the gamification approach. So even if you've not really thought about it, you know, we'll test your natural ability and your behaviours and see if it's just something that fits with us. And sometimes it, you know, it surprises people what their natural skills are. So the door's pretty much open for all sorts of different candidates, really. Um, see, just going back to the interview process as a whole, what can you talk us through what what the state the different stages are from basically finding out about the job? If, yeah, absolutely. So it's obviously been quite different this year with the yeah. pandemic because a lot of it's been online, but it has changed a little bit the way we might do it moving forward, actually. So the process initially is, you know, send a CV through. That's the initial step by applying for one of our vacancies. You know, you apply online, you send your CV and then we'll have a look at um, the CV. But if I'm honest, there's not a lot to differentiate a lot of candidates at this stage. So. Really what we're looking for is the basic stuff like right to work in the UK, you know, some really sort of yes, no answers. And then what we would be looking to do then is to send them off to do these ability and behavioural assessments, which is the computer game approach through gamification. And what that will do is give us like a natural profile of somebody that's a good fit for the role. So people that um, have these natural abilities and behaviours that we're looking for. And then we'll use that um, to then do an interview stage with the apprentices. So we used to do assessment centres, but this year we did it all online through teams like this. And we would get them to present one slide on, you know, what does safety mean to them in the rail industry, just to kind of get a little bit of an idea about what they've researched and stuff. But, and then we just ask, ask some questions about things that, you know, they may have done, whether it's, um, you know, at school or college or something relating to sport, whatever it is, just to get a bit of a sense of, you know what that person's about and and that's it really that's the simple process the the ability and behavioral assessments really are a good indication of whether somebody's you know going to fit in well and be able to sort of deliver to the standard we need so it's not that stressful a process i mean in terms of you know getting get getting into colas rail i mean no one likes interviews but you know it's a kind of key key part of the process would you say there's any kind of specific behaviours you'd look for in a potential apprentice? I think when we're recruiting, we do a lot around um, ability and behavioural assessments at the beginning of the process, because we all know there's a skills gap 
within not just rail, like you know the wider UK in terms of engineering subjects and things like that. So we spend a lot of time focusing on what people's natural ability are as opposed to what they've achieved already. And it's done through, um, it's called gamification. So it's basically like simple computer games. It's quite fun to, to, um, to actually do the assessment as opposed to tests and maths tests and stuff like that. But we're testing natural ability. Um, with skills that will naturally lend itself to the engineering side of things. Um, so that's in terms of you know what people can do. But I think in terms of behaviours, what we're really looking for is it is a tough environment out there. There's loads of rewards, there's loads of opportunity, but we need people that are motivated, driven, really want to succeed. Team players, um, you know, that are that are really wanting to get involved and to learn and progress. You know, you don't have to know exactly where you want to progress to at the point of joining on the apprenticeship programme because, you know, people are quite junior often when they join. But we're, we're looking for that drive and motivation, really. Um, does, does somebody need to be the finished article to, to enter into to coal ash rail and into the rail industry as a whole, at like a sort of junior level? Did, is there anything that... Like, I think a lot of people get the impression that to get into real, it's like, as you said, it is very high paced, but it is like, there's a lot of standards involved, there's a very high standard of work required, but is there anything that you look for, um, specifically? From my perspective, it's the behaviours we've talked about is what we're really looking for. I think we can teach the technical side of the job and we wouldn't expect somebody coming in as, a, as an apprentice to, to know that stuff anyway. Um, but even so, that's the easiest stuff to teach if you've got the natural ability because there's all the different technical frameworks and there's all sorts of trainers that can teach you that. Um, so no, I don't think you need to be the finished article at all. I think you need to just bring something new to the industry and to all the new ideas and new approaches and challenge things and see things in a different way because we want the diversity of thought coming into rail. So the short answer is no from my perspective. I don't know about you, Rich, in terms of your operational side. No, you certainly don't have to be the, the finished article. I think, you, as you said, you need to come along with the, the sort of my, uh, the, the right mindset, the sort of drive, ambition, will to succeed. We certainly, um, you know, uh, encourage and um, support all of the new employees, the apprentices, and you know, bring them on a journey. There's, there's no rush. You know, we, we, we want these um, candidates to be in it for the long run, and um, we certainly create that environment to allow that to happen and, and let that natural sort of um, ability to, to grow and nurture through their journey um, within the industry. So just would be really keen, basically keen and ambitious gets you there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Just, just that that will to succeed, that drive and ambition is a, is a great quality to have. Yeah. So Gemma and Rich, obviously, young people might be struggling to decide what, between going to university or college or to take an apprenticeship. So, why do you think an apprenticeship with Colas or just an apprenticeship in general should be chosen over university or college? Well, both are really good options, but it really depends on you as an individual. Um, I, I always think apprenticeships are a really great way to earn and learn at the same time. So you're getting practical experience and career progression, but without the cost of going to university. You start on the career ladder much earlier um, in a real job, developing skills that are desperately needed within the rail industry. I take it, do you, do you often find that apprentices are more kind of well-rounded by the time that they come to the end of an apprenticeship as opposed to somebody that finishes a graduate scheme or do you more or less find out that they're more or less at the same stage or they're progressing into slightly different level roles so obviously as an apprenticeship you start off a little bit more junior than you would at graduate level yeah. um but if you compare graduates that are going through an engineering pathway and apprentice apprentices they start at different levels, but the career progression can be the same. Mm -hmm. So they can progress up through our technical frameworks, become um, engineers, and then sort of go off into other roles across the business. So there's always possibilities for both apprentices and graduates. Yeah, so there's always like a sort of support scheme available to apprentices when both before uh, 
or sorry, during their apprenticeship and then after, there's always a chance to progress. Yeah, absolutely. Within our apprenticeship programmes, there are all sorts of people that support their development. So you have the line manager that's there supporting, you've got the centre in terms of career and development, so the people in my team, and then you've got uh, mentors as well that are progressing them to make sure that they're reaching all their technical competencies. All sorts of support available, yeah. Would you say there's a kind of clear, clear career progression available after someone's completed their apprenticeship? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, COLAS actively promotes professional development with opportunities into management and leadership roles. And this can be through, as Gemma mentioned, coaching, one-to-one -one career discussions, mentorship, as well as in industry recognised management and leadership and trans uh, development programmes. Um, I think the opportunities that it provides allow um, the opportunity for the graduates to learn new skills through uh, the apprentices to, um, to learn new skills through the vocational as well as academic training alongside on-site experience which allows the apprentices to build a really strong foundation to support their ongoing professional development uh, with the future prospect of management and leadership roles within Colas Rail. What do you what do you see as being the future of apprenticeships? Because we we kind of see it quite a lot in the news about sort of university <coughs> debt and things like that. Is that something that are you finding that you have more and more apprentices applying or potential apprentices applying every year? Or? I think apprenticeships have long been overlooked as a career choice and um, in rail and Colas Rail, our apprentices are absolutely critical to ensure we can deliver our contracts. So I think over the last few years, since the launch of the Trailblazer apprenticeship, there's definitely been a higher number of applicants than we previously used to have for our trainee schemes. Um, <clears throat> but I think the new apprenticeship programmes mean that the future of apprentices is just a really bright one. It's great. You've got government, business and education all working together to deliver the skills gaps, which means that they become real career options, I think, with really good opportunities um, to progress within all the different disciplines. So in terms of where I see them heading is I think there'll just be more of them, not just at level three or level four in rail, which are the predominantly the main ones. There'll be higher levels and hopefully we'll start to see progression in other areas as well, such as the more management ones, like the site management, the supervisors. So that's where I kind of see it heading to. Um, is there any sort of advice that you would give to people considering an apprenticeship? I think for me, in terms of apprenticeships within the rail industry, I mean, we talked about some of the behaviours that are really key, so they've got to think about can they handle that sort of fast-paced environment and is that the kind of environment they like working in? But I think, you know, we do work on the railway when a lot of other people are socialising or, you know, it's nights, it's weekends, you know, Christmas is Easter, well, we're, you know, while I'm at home with my family and stuff, you know, these guys are, and girls are out on site delivering and working really, really hard. So it's not for the faint hearted in that sense, but at the same time, the opportunities and the development and the progression um, and the successes that the team have are really worth it if that's the kind of industry for you. Like, why do you think someone would actually choose the railway industry? Because I think a lot of people don't sometimes consider it as a career option. Maybe there's a like an image problem, maybe we haven't done enough to actually promote the opportunities within it. Like personally, I never thought I'd get into rail, I never expected to, but now I'm here, I actually wouldn't work anywhere else, I have to say. So I guess like Rich, Gemma, why would you kind of encourage someone to consider rail as a career option? Well, I think for me, it's uh, it's an exciting and a challenging industry to work within, with many very, uh, many opportunities in a, a wide variety of roles and disciplines. I think it gives you the chance to work on innovative and cutting edge projects, some with real national importance. And overall, I think it's a professional and caring industry which can provide a long and prosperous career. Yeah, and just to add, I think, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I never dreamt of, I never, you know, at school thought I really want to work in rail. But I think that's one of the biggest challenges is there's a real preconception about what the industry may or may not be like. And I think for me, the biggest surprise after joining the rail industry about 12 years ago was I didn't expect it to be as fast paced and dynamic as it is. And I think 
it's constantly changing. There's so much going on. We're desperate to get um, innovative um, approaches to all the different work we do. So having um, people come in with new ideas and new approaches is absolutely critical for us. And I think it's an industry I think that sadly is really overlooked as you know, as Rich said, is for having all sorts of brilliant qualities about it. So I think my advice is to leave the preconceptions at the door, I think, and just give it a go because it, it definitely surprised me and I'm still here. <laughs> 12 years <on. laughs> Yeah, I'm two years in now. I don't think I've ever had a boring day. <laughs> exactly, it's very true. Yeah. Thank you very much to Cole Ashfield for a really informative session. Uh, we've heard a lot about what an apprenticeship can offer in terms of the role of an apprentice and the benefits to undertaking an apprenticeship and most importantly what an apprenticeship actually is.